Hi, Anissa Coy here with Firehouse Education and this week's Ask Anissa video column. And this week we're going to talk about jewelry, processing jewelry when it's been involved um, in an insurance loss and needs to be cleaned or inventoried and handled. And the question that was specifically emailed to me um, was in regards um, to asking me how within our company did we handle the delicate nature of processing jewelry. Well, Okay, so there's several things that we have put in place um, in order to be able to handle the not only the cleaning of the jewelry, but also the delicate nature of the jewelry and the often very emotional ties and feelings that are wrapped around jewelry. Um, so one of the very first things that we do when we process jewelry is we have some release forms that we have our clients sign. Um, we are not gemologists. We do not have microscopes, so we cannot tell if there are uh, prongs or fittings that are loose on uh, precious stones. And so in the cleaning process, these stones can actually fall out due to damage that was already there on the ring to begin with. And we would have no way of knowing that. So just like we have a china and crystal release form and horns and hides, we have one as well for jewelry. If a client is really nervous and does not want to sign that release because they maybe have high value um, individual pieces um, in their jewelry collection, then I always recommend that they take them to their jeweler. Um, any woman who has jewelry that is expensive, like individual pieces um, that are say several thousand dollars a piece, trust me, she has a jeweler that she uses. So I will recommend that they take their jewelry to that jeweler to be inspected, looked at, make sure it's in good condition, um, and, and they'll clean it for them usually free of charge. So that is something that I will suggest if someone is extremely nervous about their jewelry or they won't resign the release forms. I do not handle jewelry if the release form is not signed. It's one of the things that I ask a client in the initial walkthrough is I ask them, do you have a jewelry box? And if so, do you have any single item in that jewelry box that's valued at $1,000 or more? Okay, I want to know this. I actually had a client who had a jewelry box that she said was uh, had a few pieces of jewelry in it, but she gave it a value of about $75,000. Okay, so how I handled that situation was she did not want to take it to her jeweler, but she did resign my, sign my release form. However, I still had her present as I dipped and cleaned her jewelry in the ultrasonic unit, okay? Uh, which I did with a very fine um, stainless steel mesh basket so that nothing could fall out of anything. But I had her right there present with me. I then gave her the jewelry after it was cleaned, which I do to everyone. I do not store a client's jewelry box. I have them pick it up and take it with them after it's been cleaned. Um, and then I have them sign, again, the received goods release form that we have so that they have signed possession and it's now in their care. The other thing I wanna talk to you about with jewelry is you could be dealing with a writer on an insurance policy. And a writer, as you may already know, is sort of a little special insurance policy of its own within an insurance policy. For instance, on my homeowner's insurance, I have an additional rider that covers each individual piece of my jewelry. So my jewelry doesn't have a deductible when it comes to something going wrong with it and they're covered for full replacement appraised value, which is very important. If someone has a piece of jewelry that is valued over $5,000 or more, they actually could potentially get into some difficulty with their insurance company reimbursing them any more money for that item if they don't have a writer on it and an appraisal, okay? At least that is based upon some insurance company's policies, okay? Now, if there's a writer on this piece of jewelry, then we definitely want to handle it very, very carefully. Again, not unlike any other high-priced item like the slot machine I've told you guys about in the past that was $20,000 writer or the wooden table that was $18,000 on a writer. These items are handled very delicately, quickly and efficiently and given back to the homeowner with a sign-off sheet. And 
I also charge more to handle those type of items because the liability is much greater than just on an ordinary everyday item that's in the person's home. Okay? Well, I hope that answered your question. I hope that you found that of value. Please be sure and comment below and like the video if you're watching this on the YouTube channel. Be sure and subscribe. Make sure you on RNR's e-newsletter. And I thank you for watching and I will see you on next week's video.